Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for May 17th, 2020. Such a blessing that we can gather together in this way. And let us give our thanks to God as we prepare ourselves to worship him today for all of the gifts that he has given us, even, even in this time. Do have a couple of uh, continuing announcements today. We are still looking at June 14th as the probable date for returning to in-person worship. It will be different. We will have to socially distance during that time of worship. And a lot of that will depend on how ready we have the building and our technology to allow us to space out so that we keep one another safe. Also, uh, there is giving available online at hannahumc.org or by texting 219-217-1046. And as we contemplate coming back together and gathering in person, it's important that we each take care of ourselves as well. So if you are older and uh, have some health issues that make you at particular risk, do consider um, delaying returning to worship until a little bit after that. Uh, we're closely monitoring the situation. Uh, the bishop and our conference superintendent are working closely with us. Um, more communication than we've ever had, which is a blessing and uh, the gathering of wisdom of all of the clergy, not just United Methodists, but I'm also in touch with clergy from many other denominations, as we talk about how to honor God by caring for one another with the love of Christ and not putting anybody at risk. There's a lot to consider, and I will, in the near future, likely be contacting several of you to uh, see if you can assist with some of those preparations. So be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, what we can all do is continue to pray. Pray for our world. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our community and our church that not only do we make good and wise decisions, but that we do so with the love of God and the love of our neighbor as the sole, sole criteria that we make those decisions so that we can take care of one another so that we can love one another, so that we can protect one another, and so that we can encourage one another so that we all might have hope. Hear these words of encouragement. In that beloved old hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, the first verse begins with these lines. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. The emblem of suffering and shame. An emblem, it's a symbol. And a symbol is something that has meaning beyond what you see on the surface. That old rugged cross was a symbol of suffering and shame. It was a symbol of violence and oppression by the Roman Empire to put down and stop any difference of opinion, anything that was not in line with what the Roman Empire deemed fit and appropriate. It was designed to intimidate and scare people. But Jesus took that old rugged cross, the one that he was nailed to, and gave it a new meaning, a meaning of hope, a meaning of liberation and freedom, a meaning of liberty, a meaning of life and love and salvation. In our day, the coronavirus has all kinds of meanings beyond the fact that it is simply a virus. For many people, it means fear. It means doubt. It means mistrust. It means uncertainty. But for those of us who know that old rugged cross, we can give it a new meaning. We can give this virus a new meaning. Not that the virus itself will ever be a good thing, just like an instrument of execution cannot be a good thing. But what happens when we approach that bad thing with the good news of Jesus Christ can change the meaning of it in this time. Rather than living in the hope 
and the fear, rather than living with the doubt and the uncertainty, rather than living with the frustration. We have the opportunity to live with faith, to live with love, to look for justice and peace, and to, in this situation, let our faith in God be the thing that defines our lives, even in the face of this virus. So while we must take it seriously, and we must do all the things that are required for us to protect one another and to protect the world, as those who do what they must to try to find a solution to this problem. And problem it is. But it is a problem that lets us walk by faith. Now, walking by faith doesn't mean not wearing masks. It doesn't mean ignoring the social distancing. It means trusting that out of this situation, we can grow in our faith, in our love, we can grow in our Christ-likeness, and we can be a witness to others for that as well. May our hope and our faith be in our Lord Jesus Christ, in that old rugged cross, and the power of God to turn all of the bad things in this world into blessings for those who love him. Just as the cross became such an important and potent symbol of life instead of death. Let the virus become a potent symbol of our faith in God, our trust in God, and our love and care for one another as we respond to this situation with open hearts, with hands reaching out, with words of hope and encouragement. Because when we do, not only will we grow stronger in the Lord, but we will be proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ into a world that is frightened, into a world that has gone a little bit mad, And we will bring God's wisdom and sanity into the situation. We mourn those who suffer and have died. But we can rejoice that through even these things, our Lord God is here with us in this world, touching lives and people's hearts, building faith, bringing people to salvation, and uniting communities more closely than ever. Thanks be to God. Let us open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come today to hear your word to us. May your word touch our hearts today. May your word inspire our actions. May your word fill our words. And as we lift up your name in praise and prayer, as we hear your word proclaimed and contemplate how we can live that word out in the world, may your spirit fill us today with hope, with zeal, with love, with action, and always, 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 with our eyes looking to you, with our ears inclined to your word, and with our hearts open to your presence. May our lives show forth your glory and your grace in Jesus Christ and all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us now sing together the hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
as we come to that time where we join our prayers together, lifting them up to our Lord. We may seem separated by distance, by the social distancing, but through the Spirit, we are one. Through the Spirit, we are united in ways that nothing can tear us apart. Let us lift up our united spirit, our united love, our hearts with all of those concerns that we carry with us today. Last week, we lifted up Karen for some health issues. She has had good news this week, um, but yet we'll still have some surgery uh, sometime in June. So let us continue to pray for Karen, continue to pray for those who are uh, sick with the virus, those who care for them, and those who are working to make our world a safe place for normalcy again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed growing weary of this time of social distancing, of this time of this pandemic. We yearn for and we hope for a return to that which we knew before. But Lord, May we be bold enough to ask that you give us something better than what we had before. That you lead us out of this situation into a world where we love one another more fully. A world where we care for one another more deeply. A world where we take care of each other more completely. We pray, Lord, that out of the experience of this pandemic, that we might become a more loving people, a more Christian community, that we might build on all of the good works that we have done before and create something, a shining city that shines with your spirit, that shines with the light of Christ. Let all of the differences, let all of the fears, let all of the things that occupy the world be washed away in the power of your spirit and the power of Jesus Christ and in his love and grace. We're not asking, Lord, that we all agree on everything. We're asking, Lord, that we treat each other with the love and grace and mercy that we experienced while we were yet sinners through your son, Jesus Christ. May we give our lives as he gave his life, trusting that when we give our lives wholly to you, we will be raised not just on the resurrection day, but we will be raised now, raised up into service, raised up into powerful witness, raised up into a loving community. We pray, Lord, for those who have a hard time seeing your vision for our world. And we know, Lord, that each of us in our own way cannot see what you see. We pray, Lord, that we hear your voice, your guidance, your comfort, and your leading. Forgive us, Lord, for those times when we fail to hear your voice. We pray, Lord, that all of the suffering in the world might come to be healed, that it might have the balm of your loving grace and your spirit. And we offer ourselves up, Lord, as imperfect as we are, to your service. Use us as you will. Send us where you will. Guide us as you will. And forgive us, Lord, for all those times when our own will will get in the way. We know, Lord, that your son, Jesus Christ, struggled in this world. He struggled. He was tested and the desert when he was tempted by Satan. And he struggled in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed that the cup pass from him. And he struggled on the cross. He struggled to breathe. He struggled with the pain. But in all of that struggle, he always looked to you. He stood on your word. He knew your presence. And confident In your plan, he was able to say, 
not my will, but thine be done. May we find comfort, Lord, that even Jesus was tested. May we find comfort, Lord, that even in his seeming defeat on the cross, you, your spirit, your glory, your holiness, defeated the cross, giving it new meaning. Lord, we pray that you give our lives new meaning. We pray, Lord, that you give our community new meaning so that we too, as we bear our crosses, might be able to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So, Lord, in our imperfect confidence in your grace and your mercy and your love, we gather our voices together. We gather our lives together to follow Christ, to live as he lived, to serve as he served, to carry our cross as he carried his cross, and to pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of God through the words of the 66th Psalm, verses 8 through 20. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to hear the word that you have for us. Help us, Lord, in our encounter with that word, to not only hear it and comprehend it with our minds, but to fill our hearts with that word, that our lives might live that word in the world, so that all the world might come to know your word, the word made flesh our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Our psalm today, it begins on such a high note. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. But then it quickly starts talking about being tested. And it seems to say that God has brought us into prison that God has laid burdens on our back, that God has allowed people to ride over our heads, that God has sent us through fire and water. This can easily be misunderstood. It can be problematic for many people. So it's very important that as we come and hear this passage read today, that we come and hear with our hearts, hear with understanding and hear with wisdom to understand 
the good news in this passage. We're in the second week of our chosen and precious worship series where we are focusing on Christ, Jesus, chosen by God and precious by God who gave his life for those people who rejected him. Yet God still valued them as chosen and precious. Those people are us. Those people are all the people in the world. And as people in this world, whether we're believers in Jesus and followers of Jesus or not, there are so many times when we come to feel like God is indeed testing us. We feel like God is punishing us. In the lowest times of my life, I have asked these questions. What have I done, God, to deserve this? Why are you punishing me so? And I often turn to simple answers like God is testing my faith to see whether I really believe. These are understandable reactions because we know in those moments when life seems to be falling apart, when tragedy befalls us, when things make no sense, that if we don't have the power to prevent these things from happening, then surely God who does have that power must be making them happen to us. Perhaps it's to punish us for some sin. Perhaps it's that God does not really love us. Maybe we think that out of such trials, we will go stronger. We will grow stronger. And that's getting closer to the truth. The thing that I believe that comes through in this psalm is that, yes, God is testing us in all of these things. But the test isn't to see whether or not we will pass or fail. All of us have had that experience in school where we've had an exam. And whether or not we did well on that exam might mean whether or not we get to progress to the next grade, or whether or not our parents would be pleased with us, or whether or not we would have to repeat that class. But God is indeed our instructor. But the purpose of these tests that God gives us is not so that God will know whether or not we are competent Christians. God already knows our hearts. God knows what we are capable of, good and not so good. There is no surprise to God with how we handle these tests. There is no pass or fail. There is really no A plus or F. These tests are more like the kind of tests that we do in order to find out what we are like. The tests are for our benefit, for our edification, for us to understand ourselves. Now, <clears throat> you know I'm a big nerd. And in particular of the many, many ways that I'm a nerd, one of the ways is that I'm a space nerd. And in just a few weeks, uh, for the first time since 2011, Americans are scheduled to launch on an American-built rocket to go to the space station. Now, this new craft, there are actually two of them, built by two companies, one built by SpaceX and one built by Boeing. And they sort of had a somewhat friendly competition to see who could get there first. A year ago, SpaceX had an uncrewed test flight that met the mission parameters, the mission requirements. They passed that test. A couple of months ago, Boeing had their uncrewed flight test, and lots of problems were discovered in that flight. They did not meet the mission parameters. The craft did not make it to the space station. And in the review afterwards, a number of problems were discovered. Now, we could say that this was a failed test. But actually, this test was a great success because the purpose of a test 
is to learn whether or not what we have done so far is going to give us the results that we seek. And in the case of the test of the Boeing capsule, they discovered that more work needed to be done. More quality assurance needed to be done. So they've gone back and they are going through everything that they did to ensure that they get the results, which is the safe travel of astronauts that they seek. God's tests for us are a lot like that test. Because it isn't designed as a holy gotcha, where that if we fail, we have let God down. God's grace is so much greater than that. These tests that we endure, and there's another very special technical word for this kind of testing. It's called life. Life itself is a test. In each and every day, we encounter situations that show us what's really in our heart, that show us what our attitude towards God and our neighbor is. It shows us the love that we have or don't have, the faith that we have or that we don't have. These tests, they're a lot more like medical tests to see if we need medicine, to see if we need a procedure in order to bring us to spiritual health again. Just like a trip to the doctor may show that we need some sort of medication to fix something that showed up in our blood work. Or... <coughs> Or perhaps an x-ray showed something, and we need a procedure to go in and correct it. God's tests show us what we need to do to grow stronger, healthier in God's spirit. And so, because of this testing, because of these tests, and what they reveal, when we find something, that the world would call a failure, that we likely call a failure. What it really is, is a gift from God. A gift that we can bring those areas to God for God's healing, for God to make us whole, for God to perfect us, to sanctify us. And so indeed, we can praise our God. All peoples can praise God because God has given us the opportunity to learn about ourselves and to grow. In my own life, when there have been those times that I have failed, and boy, have there been a lot of those, I will often, often chastise myself, beat myself up, and decide that I am worthless, that I'm hopeless. But then there is that voice of God's Spirit reminding me that His Son, Jesus Christ, gave His life for me. That voice that speaks to me and reminds me that I am God's creation, that God made me. God made me to love me and for me to love God and for me to share that love with others. And that changes my perspective on these perceived failures of my tests. In fact, those failures have become some of my greatest blessings. They do several things. One is, they remind me that my hope is not in my own righteousness. My hope is not in my own perfection. My hope is not in my own ability to follow God's will and law. My hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is in the grace of God revealed in Christ. My hope is in the cross. My hope is in God's mercy, God's love. My hope is not in me. What a relief. 
What a weight off of my shoulders. The other thing that they show is to be a blessing is when I learn that I am so dependent on God, and that's how God intended it to be, that I can share that experience with others, that my knowledge of the pain of failing a test in life and experiencing God's grace is such a precious gift, a witness to give to others when they experience their own failures, their own stumbles. I can share my experience. I can share my knowledge of the peace that comes from letting go of my need to earn my salvation, to earn God's love. And I can share with people that God loves them whether they pass these tests or not. In these moments, the words, those famous, famous, often almost overused words of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's in those moments of failing a test when those words have the most power for me, where God's love is experienced in its fullness, not just something that I intellectually believe, it's something that I stand and walk on. As Paul reminds us, in the face of God's grace, when we fail, when we sin, we should not sin more to get more grace. The response is to learn from those things, to rely and walk on God's loving grace so that we don't have to fail, to live by the power of the Spirit so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. But yet, when we do, that forgiveness is there, that grace is there. And it's all because of the chosen and precious one Jesus Christ, and it's all because God, through Christ, chose to redeem us on the cross. So today, we live in a time that we're likely experiencing to be a test. We're sheltered in place. We're not yet able to come back and worship in person. When we do worship in person, it will look so very different for a time than it used to. The distance will be there. It won't feel the same. It's a test for us. How will we respond? And if we respond by trusting in God's grace, and if we learn from this time how to reach out more effectively to others, how to support each other more fully, if we learn as a community to walk more confidently on the solid ground of Jesus Christ, the living stone that we talked about last week, the way that we can make a difference in our lives, in each other's lives, in our community's life and in the world is limited only by our willingness to learn from the test. Just as that old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame, has become a sign of hope in new life, eternal life in God's love in Jesus Christ, how we respond to this test can also make it a symbol of the power of Christian community when it is filled with the Holy Spirit we may not be able to come into the sanctuary and sing our beloved songs, but we can go out into the world and with our lives, with the love of God motivating us, guiding us, and leading us to reach out in love and mercy and grace to others. We are singing a song. And when they face their tests, they too can come to learn 
of the joy of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And then all peoples, as the psalmist said, can give God praise. Let us praise God with our lives. Let us praise God with our successes. Let us praise God with our failures. For in all things, for those that love God, they will work together for good. Trust God. Trust Jesus. Trust the Holy Spirit. That we are walking through this time, not on our own strength, not on our own wisdom, not on our own goodness. For when we do that, we will truly fail the test. But when we stand secure in the knowledge that pass or fail, A plus or F, God's mercy has already covered us. Praise God for the lessons that the life that he has given us has taught us. And that lesson is that God's mercy is boundless, that God's love is infinite, that Jesus Christ gave all that we might have all. In his name, let us pray with our lives praise of Christ, the chosen and precious one. Amen. To live the call this week, consider thinking of one of those times that you didn't pass the test and share it with somebody. Share it not as an exercise in beating yourself up, but share it in order to show that when we make mistakes, God can teach us a greater truth. To get the ball started, I'll share one of mine. When I was in college, I had a dear friend and some guys in my dorm were talking about her, saying some rather not nice things. And out of my desire to fit in and be accepted with the guys, I joined in and said some things about my friend that were not kind, that were not Christian. And word got back to my friend, and our friendship was devastated. She was devastated. We repaired that relationship. And in that failure of that test, I learned that in the moment, while I might have valued being accepted by the guys in the dorm, what I really value more was the love of a good friend. And I almost lost that good friend because I let something else in the moment become more important. I thank God that through our mutual faith, my friend and I preserved our, our friendship, our relationship, that it wasn't lost. But to this day, my heart hurts for how I hurt her, simply because I momentarily valued the wrong thing. I give thanks and praise to God that through that failure, I became a better person. I became more sensitive to my values and how I lived them out in the world. And I became more aware of how my words are very powerful. Not that I haven't gone on and made other mistakes, but each failure is an opportunity to learn. So to live the call this week, try it out. Dust off an old failure that's sitting in the back of your mind, in the bottom of your heart, and share with one other person how you have been blessed by that failure, by growing, by learning, by repenting. Come and hear each other's stories. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, your glory and your goodness and your perfection is revealed through the good and the bad that we do in this world. 
For every place that we stumble, your grace is there to pick us up. We thank you, Lord, for all of these tests. We thank you, Lord, for those times that by your grace we have honored you with making the right choices, with having the right attitudes and the right thoughts. But we also praise you, God, for those times when through our own errors, through our own selfishness, through our own sinfulness, through our own hard hearts, we have given you the opportunity to teach us a lesson in love and grace and forgiveness and mercy. And may we live out those lessons by giving grace and love and forgiveness and mercy in the world to those who also stumble. Lord, fill us with your spirit and help our faith to trust in your grace so that we need not fear our own stumbles but only fear shutting you out entirely. Open our hearts to you, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn, Thou Hidden Source of Calm Repose. Having come and heard, now go and speak. Share your story. Share your confidence in your faith, in the mercy and the grace and the love of God and Jesus Christ. If your faith right now is weak, listen to other people's stories. Seek out the word of God and look at those tests in your own life is an opportunity not only for us to grow, but as a powerful witness to the chosen and precious one. So in his name and on his mission, go into the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.